I'm Steve Kaplan and I've been using Photoshop for 30 years and in that time I've made a lot of mistakes. So I've made this video to show you how to avoid them. Here's a rustic old window and I've added a layer mask to the background so that we can see through it. And I want to make a view inside this room. So let's add a room setting and let's add someone standing in the window. Now all the elements are in place, but why doesn't it look real? Well, the answer is there's no glass in this window. And glass is a physical substance and it has a physical property. And this is something that you see very often in photo montage illustrations. The easy way to add the sense of glass is simply to add the kind of view that might be reflected in this window. Let's take this bit of landscape, move it behind the window, and we'll reduce the opacity of this reflection to, let's say, 30%. It's barely visible, but it does give the sense of there being some glass in the window. Here it is without the glass, and once we add the glass, it makes the whole scene that much more convincing. Here's an impressive palace, but it's a rather unimpressive sky. In Photoshop CC, it's easy to select the sky and then delete it. And we can replace it with another sky. Here's one I found on Wikipedia. So it's a palace and it's a sky, but why does it look wrong? Well, the problem is that there's no perspective in the sky. In the foreground image, we've got these big pillars and the buildings get smaller and smaller as they recede into the distance. The sky needs to do that as well. If you just point your camera upwards and take a photograph, you're going to get a sky that doesn't fit. Instead, you need a sky that's been photographed in perspective. Now the clouds get smaller as they recede into the distance, just as the building does. And you can download a wide range of perspective skies for free from photoshop.london. Here's a background feed of a forest, and let's put a man standing in front of it. It's a very simple photo montage, and the man has more or less the same kind of colouring as the background, so he should fit in there well. But why doesn't it look convincing? Well, the reason is that there's no sense of him being integrated into the scene. A simple way of doing that is to add a foreground element in front of him. So let's put in this bush. It's a little obtrusive, but if we go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur, we can add quite a lot of Gaussian Blur to this. Let's go for three pixels. And now because the bush is out of focus, you barely notice it but it does very much place the man within the scene, whereas before he was just standing in front of it. Here's a treasure chest standing on a sandy beach. So why doesn't it look as if it's really standing on this beach? The problem is that's not how sand behaves. You would never get a hard line at the edge of the chest. So let's add a layer mask to this chest. I will choose Layer Mask Reveal All. That makes the empty mask. Let's switch to the brush tool and if we choose a soft edged brush we can paint over the edge and it hides the chest where we paint in black. But that still doesn't look convincing. Again that's not how sound really behaves. Let's undo that and instead we'll change the mode of this brush from normal to dissolve. When we now paint it black on the layer mask, it continues to hide the chest, but it produces this dotty outline. If we reduce the opacity of the brush to, say, 20%, we now paint fewer dots, and we can bring a bit more sand just sprinkling up over the edge. It's all a bit too harsh, so with the mask selected, go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur, and just a half a pixel radius of blur is enough to soften that sand and make it that much more convincing. 
Here's a sign photographed in perspective, and I want to put some text on this sign in the same perspective. So let's start off by going to our text tool, and we'll type our sign. The question is, how do we make this text match the perspective of the sign behind it? Well, we could go into Free Transform and try and maybe rotate the text or shear it. But however we do it, we're not going to match that perspective. If it were a regular object, we could hold Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, and grab one of the corner handles, but we can't do free distortion on live text. So here's a better way. We'll make a new layer, and on this layer we'll use the rectangular marquee to draw a shape that more or less matches the shape of the sign. We'll fill it with white and deselect. Now go to the layer menu and choose layer smart objects convert to smart object. When we now go into free transform, we can hold command on a Mac, control on a PC, and drag each of these corners to the correct location on the sign. And that looks about right. If we change the mode of this layer from normal to multiply, then because it was filled with white, it disappears entirely. We can double click this smart object to open it in the new window. We can now type our text and we can position it wherever we want within this sign. Let's put it right in the middle. If we now save this smart object, when we go back to the original document, there's our text perfectly in perspective. And the advantage of making it a smart object is at any point we could double click to open it and we can make the text bigger or we could change the font and we could even change the wording. When we save it, our changes are immediately reflected back into our base object. Here's a hallway and we're going to make this floor reflective. We'll start by adding a more appropriate tiled floor and I'll put in a mask that I've already drawn so that the floor fits the shape of the room. So I'll start by loading that mask as a selection, so now the floor area is selected, and now I'm going to inverse that selection so everything except the floor is selected. I'll go on to the background layer and make a new layer via copy. And I'll drag that above the floor layer. Let's reduce the opacity to around 50% so we can see what we're doing. And with the rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to make a selection of the right-hand side of this wall and now use Free Transform to drag it down and I'll grab one of the side handles holding Command on a Mac, Control on a PC to drag it down. This will shear the layer and I'll hold the Shift key as well so I drag it directly down. There's the first half of the wall. I'll make a selection of the left-hand half of the wall Go into Free Transform again, drag it down so that the left edge is in the right place, and now hold the Command or Control key and slide it up, and there's our reflection. If it's too strong, we can just reduce the layer opacity to, let's say, 30%, and now it looks more convincing. We'll add a tree to it, and we want to make a reflection of this tree as well. So I'll duplicate the tree, flip it vertically, and now move it down into place. And let's move it behind the original, and once again reduce the opacity to 
And you might think, well, the reflection of the walls is at 30%, the reflection of the tree is at 30%, that should be fine. But here is the problem. With the tree at 30%, we can still see the 30% brickwork through it. And that's a very common mistake when working with multiple reflections. Obviously, we shouldn't be able to see the reflected wall through the reflected tree. The solution is set the tree opacity to 100%, the reflected floor opacity to 100%, and now select them both and make a new group from these two layers. And when we set the opacity of the entire group to 30%, there's our correct reflection. You can no longer see the brickwork through the reflected tree. Here's a hallway with some lifts, or elevators if you're American, and I want to add a little surrealism to this. So I'll start off by masking the hallway to remove those entrances. And let's add a beach background. And right away that gives us quite a nice sense of something that isn't quite right about this image. I don't like the way the sand stops short at the edges, so let's add another layer of sand, just bringing it trickling through the doorway. And there is our surreal scene. So why does it look so sterile? Well, as any cartoonist knows, if you have a sign by itself, however funny the sign is, it's going to look dull unless you add a person in front. And when you add a person to the scene, it immediately gives it much more humanity, because people look at people. For completeness, Let's add a reflection beneath him. When you're putting multiple people in the scene, of course, the further away they are from the camera, the smaller they should appear. So why does this scene look so wrong? This is one of the most common Photoshop mistakes. And the answer is that the people need to have their eyelines on the horizon. Because when you look at a scene, your eyeline is always on the horizon. So how do you work out where the horizon is? Well, if you look at the railings, they're sloping upwards. And if you look at the top of the window, it's sloping downwards. Where a horizontal on the side appears actually horizontal, that's where the horizon is. So we can bring down a horizon line to round about there. Now, when we move people so that their eye lines are exactly on the horizon, they now look correctly like they belong in the scene. If you want to bring someone further forwards, go into Free Transform, pin the eye line by holding Option or Alt and clicking to set the anchor point. And now as you make them bigger, they'll slide forwards and backwards in the scene. But with their eye lines on the horizon, they will always look like they belong in this environment. It's relatively easy to open a door in Photoshop. This is how it's done. If we use the lasso tool, if you hold Option or Alt, this allows you to trace straight lines between points where you click. And that means we could just mark the four corners of this door to select the whole thing. We'll make a new layer via copy. And then duplicate this layer as well. So now we've got two copies of the door. With the top copy, go into Free Transform and make it a little bit narrower. And then hold Command and Shift on a Mac, Control and Shift on a PC. And you can drag the bottom corner and the top corner to get your door into the perspective that you want. And the reason I made the second copy of the door is so we can select that and fill it with black. And there's the open door. Now there are three further things that need to be done. First of all, the door has no edge to it. So let's switch onto the background and use the marquee tool to select a slice of this wood to the right of the door and we'll make a new layer from that. 
We can move it across, bring it in front of the door, and now we can drag it up to the top and easily scale it down to the full height of the door. And that gives the door some thickness. For extra accuracy, use the eraser tool and just shear off the bottom and top at a slight angle. Because the door is open, we need a shadow on the ground. And if you look at the shadow of this box, that is the angle we're looking for. We'll go to the background layer and use the lasso tool again to draw the shape of our shadow. We'll make a new layer, fill the area with black, and now we can just reduce the opacity of this layer until we get the right density for our shadow. Now here is the mistake that most people make when doing something like this. On the original door, we were viewing it from the right, so the right edge was closer to us, and then we could see the reveals on the left. In our version, the left edge is closer to us, so we need to turn this around so the reveals are being viewed from the other side. Let's select our door layer, and with the lasso tool again, we can select just this window area and we'll make a new layer from it. In Free Transform, we can flip it horizontally and again hold Command and Shift or Control and Shift to grab each of those top handles independently. And let's nudge it slightly to get it in the right place. That's how it was with the reveals on the wrong side, and here it is with the correct view of those windows. Placing people inside cars is far from trivial. The first thing you have to do, of course, is cut the car out from its background, and then mask out the windows. You can use the view you can more or less see through the windows to build the interior of the car, and then you can add a new background, maybe a shadow underneath it. You'll remember from earlier in this tutorial, we need to put some glass in those windows. And the easiest way to do that is just to add some sky and then reduce the opacity to, say, 50%. And the final step, of course, is to put your people inside the car. And this is the mistake that I see almost more than any other Photoshop error. You assume that because the people are sitting in the front, you're going to see them framed in the front windscreen. What this ignores is the fact that there has to be room for people to get their legs into the car and to reach the steering wheel. When people are in a car, they aren't at the front like this, but they're set much further back so they can still reach the steering wheel, perhaps even as far back as here. And while we're at it, maybe add a curved adjustment to darken them up slightly as less light is reaching them, and maybe even add a little shadow where the light doesn't get them right at the top. When you put people in the car, always remember, make room for the people. If you found this useful, please subscribe to this channel. And you can find many more Photoshop images, tutorials and resources at photoshop.london.